Hello everyone and welcome to another video of Grim Dawn Forgotten Gods. Guys, I have been trying my hardest to get this video out and I have scrapped it and redone it so many times because I want you guys to understand the mechanics and the stats in Grim Dawn and how they work. Um, I get people all the time. I mean, it just, it always happens, like, constantly, almost daily, people saying, like, my character dies all the time, it sucks, like, I hate this game, so on and so forth, and it's like, if you just, if you understand the game and the mechanics, and I'm trying my best to explain that and get that across to people, um, the game becomes really enjoyable, and you can do some really cool things, you can manipulate your build in some really fun ways. So, this build is going to be a pet hybrid caster build. And it's really enjoyable. I did away with the skeletons because they just die way too easy in Shattered Realm, unfortunately, and harder content. And uh, until they fix that, it's really just not a fun, viable build. And so I'm running this setup. And this is fantastic. It works really good. And I think you guys are going to really like this. So there is a general rule in Grim Dawn. You cannot convert damage twice. So keep that in mind as I'm explaining this build, guys. So for example, you can't take 100% fire damage, convert it to lightning, and then convert 100% lightning to cold. It won't jump that second time and go to cold. It'll just stay lightning, okay? So please keep that in mind. Let's go over the items, we'll go over the skills, and then devotions as always. So as you can see, the two sets that I'm running are going to be the Diviners and the Bismils. Now, I'm going to try to just go over each item and explain what's important about them, and we'll just go from there and see how it goes. Okay, so the weapon is the Wrath of the Ascendant. Obviously, this is going to be good for you as the caster part of this build. It is good for the pets as well because it is dropping Aether Resistance, which is really nice, as well as dropping... 95 OADA, and it says minus 95 OADA, so this will actually stack with other sources that say minus on them, so please keep that in mind, as well as dealing some extra Aether damage there, which is real nice. Bismil's Influence is giving us flat elemental damage for pets. Anytime you get a flat damage source of any kind, it basically goes to the weapon attack, or the basic attack for that um, target, so for the pets it's going to be their basic attack, it's bonus flat damage. It is elemental damage, so what that means is that elemental, if it's a flat, gets dissected into thirds. So, let's say it is 10 elemental damage, just for math's sake and making it easy for myself. That would actually get dissected into about 3.25 fire, lightning, and cold damage around there. Something like that. Maybe like 3.3. Um, but anyway, it still would be 10 damage. It's just that there would be portions of that damage that were different, if that makes sense. So... The reason why that's really important is because on the 3 set here for the Diviners, I'm converting 100% of any cold damage that my pets have into Aether damage, okay? That's really good, and it gets even more convoluted from here. Okay, so now you can see that the ring is converting 23% physical and 38% acid into elemental damage for pets. Okay, and this ring is doing the same thing, it's adding flat elemental to pets, it's converting 22% physical and 27% acid damage over into elemental for pets. Okay, so where that is valuable is on things like Blood of Dreeg. As you can see, this gives your entire party a flat 372 acid damage buff, which is going to go to the weapon attack like I mentioned before. And then a good portion of this is going to be converted over into flat elemental. Okay, so the two primary damage types are going to be aether and elemental for this build, elemental being the secondary overall. As you can see, the Diviner's Mask is giving us a lot of nice damage stats that we need here. It's converting 24% of our elemental damage to Aether as the player. That is important. I will talk about that here in a second. It is also giving Yil Omen a minus 70 DA debuff, so this will stack with the weapon like I mentioned. It's also giving it a minus 10 uh, Vitality and Aether Resist Reduction debuff, which is very valuable for us, considering it is the type of damage we are dealing primarily, which is real nice. It also gives Reap Spirit a minus one second skill recharge timer, which is good because we can basically spam Reap Spirit with a setup. It's really fun. As well as giving Reap Spirit a flat 25 reduced target's resistance for three seconds. Okay, so that's overall really nice for us as well. Bismil's Iris, all damage for us as a player. One skill's a Necromancer, some health, some resist, really good. And then it's giving some pet bonuses there that are valuable. And then you get the Bismil's Command proc. You can activate this, and this gives your pets a little bit of a percent and flat heal. It gives your pets the ability to give 20 reduced targets resistance for 2 seconds when they hit anything. It does not stack with the Reap Spirit debuff, however Reap Spirit only hits one target. So this still is some value. It's going to allow you to have your pets dropping resist across the board on everything they hit, as well as giving pets 20% increased attack speed. So still really good overall for us. Diviner's Codex. It's going to be adding flat Aether damage to Reap Spirit, as well as reducing the energy cost. It's going to be converting 40% Vitality damage into Aether for us as a player. Again, there is a little bit of value there, so that's not bad. And uh, overall, just really good for us. Uh, chest Armor. Just a few extra stats here, as well as some more elemental conversion to Aether for us as a player. Nothing bad there. 
Dominator's Preserver Breaches of Caged Soul. So these are phenomenal. I crafted these, and I did use these with my Cabalus Skeleton build. But as you can see, it still gives you all damage and Aether damage as the player. And uh, that's really good, considering we are doing Aether damage primarily. So really lucky with these. If you can get lucky with these, definitely use them. Um, if you can't, I would say using something like Mystical Wraithborn Leg Wraps or anything Aether-based for legs you know, are a viable option. It just really kind of depends on what you can get. But these are phenomenal. I got really lucky. Normally these k soul pants do not roll three stats for pets. I got really lucky there, and the values are really, really high. Mogdrogan's Ardor, one to all skills, super good. Health free is the player. All damage, crit damage, Aether Chaos is this for pets, as well as giving you the Mogdrogan's Ardor buff. This is a really good little buff. It's fantastic to use, so definitely use this if you can. Mythical Shadow Fiend's Cord. I'm surprised this really is not a legendary item. It is just too good to not use. It gives one to Necro and Occult of Skills. It's perfect for us. As well as giving all damage to pets, percent OA to pets, which is always fantastic on pets. Percent OA is really good. As well as giving Pierce and Vitality Resist. Pierce is one of the harder resistances to get for a pet build, so that is fantastic. This build is amazing, so definitely try to find these and use these if you can. Using the Bismiel's Mark. Okay, so this is where this build gets a little more convoluted. The Bismiel's Mark is actually converting 52% of our pet's vitality damage over into elemental damage as well. If you look at Diviners, Diviners is adding a flat 42 vitality damage buff, which again goes to the weapon attack. And then if you look at things like the Bone Harvest, Soul Harvest, this is giving pets another flat 28 vitality damage as well as all damage when I proc Bone Harvest. So what ends up happening here, a little over half of that flat damage also gets converted into elemental damage for our pets so this is really not a bad little item here and it synergizes pretty well with what we're doing and then as well giving some percent away and whatnot for pets really good okay i'm using impervious stone plate greaves of the kings i did craft this one you can find items like these through playing the game even more so if you start doing shattered realm things like that what's important about these is that this will actually work for you your pets and your party okay so essentially what this does is when this procs this will actually give me and my pets 145 percent increased damage as well as 10 percent total speed so this effectively works like a pet and player item and it's really really nice as you can see the base stats on the item itself are very defensive really good resist things that i needed for this character so i was lucky to craft that all right using the mythical aether reach they did buff these they changed these a little bit overall they gave it a buff which you can see it gives pets a flat 12 aether damage buff that number can vary 12 is probably the highest i have found but that is really nice, obviously, since we are primarily focusing on Aether damage for our pets. This also gives two to Reef Spirit. It also reduces the cooldown on Reef Spirit, which is very valuable. All right, so I believe that's all the items overall. So hopefully that was easy to understand. If it's not, I'm sorry. Leave, <laughs> leave comments in the uh, comment section below. Okay, so let's go over the skills real quick. On the Occultist side, you don't really need to put more than one point into Curse of Realty. And Vulnerability, it drops... Poison Acid, Vitality, and Elemental Resist. I did put a few extra points here, I believe. Again, that minus 52 DA will stack with the other two sources I was mentioning before, and it will drop Elemental Resist, which is really important for this setup since that's, again, one of our secondary damage types. But because it doesn't drop Aether Resist, I felt like the importance of putting this up to 10 wasn't as high, and I felt like the points were better invested in other areas. All right, so Blood of Drig, again, I max this as high as possible, and then Aspect of the Guardian 12 out of 12 is just fine. That 12% physical resistance is very important for our pets and our party, as well as getting a lot of flat OA, health regeneration, all that good stuff. So I really, really like this skill, as always. I pushed all of these as high as I could with the gear that I'm wearing. The familiar is very strong with this setup, considering we get to use two of them. So the projectiles he shoots will be like a shotgun AOE, hits multiple targets. The Storm Spirit, this is giving our party and pets a flat elemental damage buff, so 476. So... Again, a third of that's going to be fire, a third of that's going to be lightning, and a third of that's going to be cold. The cold portion of this is going to get converted into aether, so that is where this is really valuable. And then any elemental we have from all the other elemental conversions is getting boosted by 155% here, which is real nice. The lightning strike is very powerful. The familiars crush things with this ability here. They do a ton of damage, so it's very valuable to use this as well. Summon Hellhound, I put him at 16 out of 16. He's just overall a pretty good little pet. And I had extra points on around, so I pumped him up to at least 16. And he does do a lot of physical fire. Again, the rings are converting a good portion of the physical over an elemental. And it's converting acid into elemental, so he's getting a 
good portion of his physical converted elemental damage, which is really, really nice. Remember that I mentioned before that conversion cannot happen twice. This is what I want to mention real quick. Because this is converting physical to elemental, this is converting physical to elemental, and they're both doing acid to elemental. Here's what's going to happen. Um, the flat 6 and 8 will apply to pets, and then the cold portion does get converted to aether, right? The flat 476 gets dissected into thirds, the cold portion does get converted to aether, correct? Okay, so he has base physical as a basic attack for his pet stats here. The thing is, is that once that physical, which is about 60% or so, I didn't do the math, but whatever, about 60% or so gets converted over into elemental on that physical, that elemental will then do fire, lightning, and cold, but it will not convert the cold to aether because it's already being converted, okay? This is what I was talking about before. It's still good, but just that portion itself will not be converted, so please keep that in mind. Bonds of Ismail, one point, and manipulation 12 to 12. On Necromancer side, one point into Bone Harvest, one into Dread, and then we put Soul Harvest at 12 out of 12. Like I said, I will have a Grim Tools, so it'll show you what skill points I put in and how many exactly. Spectral Binding as high as possible. There's a reason for this. Our Reap Spirit actually does do 300% of our main hand damage, so this actually does weapon damage. So any flat damage we get applied to our basic attack, it's going to then transfer over into our reef spirit as well. So that's why that's very important to get conversions in flat damage with this setup as the caster. Um, giving some percent aether, some health, and some OA, which is really nice. Spectral Wrath, really good overall. Anytime I get hit, it just automatically does damage to enemies, and it drops their aether resistance, which is very valuable for us. Summon Blight Fiend one-pointers all across here. I would like to have more points to obviously pump him up if I could. At one point, it's amazing. It's always a 10 meter radius, and it just confuses all enemies it hits, and it's really nice. Call of the Grave, this is obviously a no-brainer if you're running pets. All damage, crit damage for pets, and health regeneration for pets, always good, never bad. Master of Death, all damage, which is good for our pets. That's what we care about here, and then obviously the 12% OA is what we care about here. There is a 25% physical converted to vitality for pets. That doesn't really matter, and it won't get converted twice again. So it will take a portion of the pet physical and make it vitality, but that's really not a big deal. A uh, majority of the physical and acid are being converted into elemental, so we don't really care about that either way. That's not a stat we want, but it's not going to destroy us either. All right, and then Reef Spirit, as high as possible. With this setup, you can spam this skill, and it spawns one of the Wraith Spirits. And with this setup, you can have four out total at a time because it increases the summon limit, and then you can also allow them to live much longer because of the set and everything that I'm using. All right, let's go into Devotion. I'll just skim over Devotion real quick. This is actually really nice because it gives us Aether damage and pets all damage. Works perfectly. Arcane Bomb for the Aether Resist reduction. The reason why I'm using Viper is because this 20% reduced target's elemental resistance for 3 seconds only works if you hit something with a weapon attack or weapon damage. So because our Reef Spirit is getting weapon damage, we get full use out of this, which is really neat. So we can throw Reef Spirit, it does a 25 flat reduction, and on top of that it does another 20% reduced elemental resist reduction. So this will actually work with the Reef Spirit and drop elemental resist, which is really cool. So that's why I'm using that. Using Shepherd's Call, as always. Two points into the Empty Throne, and that's just to pump up the pet resist to max on the Pierce, which is really nice. Toad, getting some pet bonuses here, as well as good bonuses for us as a player. Again, we are getting flat Aether damage and percent Vitality Aether damage, so this will be applied to the Reef Spirit. Mogdrogan the Wolf, always good. Really hard to pass this up on any pet build because of the 15% OA and 40% total speed. Wolverine, a really, really good constellation for pets. Gives a lot of very well-needed resistances that are hard to obtain for pets, so I really like this constellation. Doing Behemoth. Behemoth did get buffs overall. It's really strong. I like the health regen for you and your pets. Very valuable, so I use that. And we're running the Raven. Since we do have two familiars to doing lightning damage, there's nothing wrong with this little buff here. Really nice OA for pets. Got the Panther, and... Yep, main cross right here. Okay, guys. Hopefully that was painless and not too boring and confusing just to show you guys how the reef spirit works you can throw out the reef spirit that's how quick you can spam it which is really nice it does decent damage this is without a lot of debuffs going on as you can see it will keep spawning these wraiths where this becomes valuable is that these wraiths because shattered realm has really hard boss rooms at times in higher levels and basically our pets can be torn down in one shot at points this is really cool because being able to spam these pets out makes it very difficult for the bosses to completely kill them and remove them from the fight. That's where this becomes really valuable. Alright, anyways guys, let's try to get in some gameplay and show you what this build can do. I hope you guys enjoy.
Okay guys, well there you have it. There's this build in play, and I enjoy this build a lot, so hopefully you guys think it looks good, and you want to enjoy it too, so give it a go. Two things I want to mention real quick. So the set is converting 100% cold on pet damage over into Aether. This is really important. I did forget to mention this earlier because our Wraith is actually dealing flat cold, flat vitality. So all that cold goes straight to Aether, and then we have 52% of the vitality getting converted to Elemental. So that's why this setup works as well as it does. Also, I did want to display the uh, pet resist when I have my buffs and everything going. As you can see, they're all max across the board. So this setup is actually really good, considering we can uh, hit the max resist there. Alright guys, so if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. It definitely helps me out a lot. And if you guys haven't, check out the Discord. Check out the stream. I haven't been streaming as much lately. Uh, been really busy with other things, but I do plan on picking it up again here soon. So, yeah. If you guys could, please do that for me, and you all take care, and have a great day.